I remember one specific instance where I was told that because I was also attracted to women that I didn't belong in an LGBT space. Because to me, it just, it just seemed like a very odd thing to say when the B part of LGBT is, is right there. <laughs> it just seemed like an, like an odd thing to say to me. While bisexuality is now actually considered a proper sexuality, that doesn't stop the rest of the world from trying to convince us otherwise. Bisexuality is seen by a lot of people as just a type of porn, meaning two women and one man. And what I've noticed is that the film and TV industry are the main people that show this biphobia and erasure. It's a trope, I mean, yet we're in pop culture that girls always experiment in, in, in college, and I feel like that's not a, like a how they perceive bisexuals, it's just how they perceive bisexuality or sexuality in general. And there's so many misconceptions about bisexual people being greedy or, you know, you're just gay and you're just trying it or you're just lesbian and you're just trying it. Film and TV have so much power to influence the public. So why are they the main culprits of this kind of content? I don't feel like the media help to break down those misconceptions or, you know, dismantle those stereotypes in the way that they should. So why are we so underrepresented on screen? I'm Rebecca. And I've been an out and proud bisexual woman since I was 20 years old. But something I've noticed is that there is a lack of positive representation of bisexuals within film and TV. So my question is, where is the B in film and TV? There are a couple of bisexual characters that come to mind, Rosa Diaz um, from Brooklyn Nine-Nine and um, Confirmed Bisexuals. Why is that the only one that I can actually remember? I feel that like there are way more, but I can't really remember anything. And there are more bisexual characters out there. In fact, Byte.org have noted on their website 147 bisexual characters in film and television. Which is amazing because when we are asked to list them, most can only name three or four obvious characters. Why is that? The answer to this is simply down to the fact that most of these characters just aren't seen as bisexuals. They're seen as probably gay or most likely have always been straight but are just experimenting. Yeah, I do feel like the media influence how non-bisexual people view bisexual people. Mostly in that we're not on the media or on the screen, so people forget we exist. In life, I believe that representation of all genders, sexualities, ethnicities, all should be accurate and not play up to stereotypes. To try and get a different perspective, I'm talking to another bisexual that actively writes about bisexuals within literature. I am Veda, I'm a social media manager, consultant and coach um, and I've been making a living off of um, my social media packages and freelancing. I've been in marketing for about four or five years now and social media is something that I've always been interested in. I wouldn't say I actually came out, it was kind of, my family are quite accepting when it comes to that sort of thing so it kind of just drop it in conversation. Yeah, lots of people do come out to their families um, in a certain way, but for me, it was kind of just something that was there, just kind of happened. By being so active in the world of social media, I then asked Vader how she thinks the rest of the world views bisexuals and how that is reflected in film and TV. This may seem really a weird thing to say as part of the LGBT community, but I don't think that coming out should be a thing, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. I think it should just be a natural thing. Like, people don't be like, oh, I'm straight, by the way. Like, I'm just, I, oh, I'm gay. You're making it a bigger thing than it is, in my exactly. opinion. People are fascinated with people that are bi, and I just think it's a bit much. But at the same time, I feel like it's, it's difficult to represent bi people without doing that. I love um, David Eleven who writes with John Green, and he just basically writes LGBT books. He wrote a really interesting book that I love, which is about a person who changes every day into another body. Basically, the whole premise of this book isn't actually centered around his identity. 
is actually centered around his love for someone. So he loves this girl, but he changes into a different body each day. So he wakes up in someone else's bed. He can yeah. wake up as a gay person, as a bi person, a trans person, goes through their struggles, wakes up as a black person, wakes up as goes to school as someone else. And he sees the challenges that each of these people face and has to get them through the day so that he can get to the next day. Basically, the whole premise of it is just him trying to figure out a way, figure out who he is, because he has no face, he has no body, or they have no body, they have no face, so yeah. there's no gender to them. And I found that that kind of book, that was really strange for me to read, because it was not like anything I've ever read before. And I wish authors would do more of that. That's why that guy is my favorite author because he doesn't see people as a gender. And I think that that's a really important thing. I feel like authors and um, producers and writers, they kind of take advantage of, I don't know, that by representation and they kind of like run with it, even though they don't know anything about it. After hearing Vader's thoughts on bisexuality with reference to literature, I thought the next best person to talk to should be someone who has a direct link to the filmmaking industry. This brought me to a London-based director slash writer, and while he is a heterosexual man, he does have strong opinions on bisexual representation within the film and TV industry. My name is Henry Wentworth, and technically, I'm a filmmaker. If you can call what I do filmmaking, and I'm a writer. A lot of people say, in the past, the, the representation has been really bad. Yeah, but that was a reflection of the time. We're now in a different time. We're now in a different time where we're a lot more accepting of the community. And we're also, I think, well, I like to believe, we're more about equality in the community. Gay people, bisexual people, whatever, can do any jobs that have been done in the past. Where in the past that wasn't a thing. I can't think of any bisexual male characters in film TV, with the exception of Oberyn Martell from Game of Thrones. I'm not saying they don't exist, I'm not saying that they aren't out there, all I'm saying is I don't feel they're represented enough. I feel that bisexuality is really only represented by women. I think it depends on the material that you watch, and I think it depends on the makers of the material that you watch. If it's people who are well informed, and if it's people who have done their homework, have spent time with people, have discussed this kind of thing, then you're going to get good representation and you're also going to get a better perception by people because a lot of people's uh, first understanding of things like gay people, bisexual people, is through film, is through film and television. You learn about that stuff and you also learn about that stuff from quite a young age as well. You may not know it, you may not understand it at that point, but you will acknowledge these people are different. They're not reduced down to the fact that they're, they're gay, they're bi, they're trans, whatever. They have got a character, they have got a storyline, it's just one aspect of their life. I mean, the one that I'm waiting on, which I don't think has happened yet, is Marvel. I don't, I'm surprised that we haven't had clear representation from Marvel yet. I mean, we have had, apparently by all accounts, Valkyrie is bisexual. I hope that we see that expanded on more, but again, I hope we don't reduce her down to that. Because, you know, characters have other things going on in their, in their stories, it should just be one thing. One of the few things that I will credit social media for is that it did bring, especially the community, to, to, the, to the front, basically, and just saying, be accepted. As a massive Kevin Smith fan, I wanted to ask him his opinion on the infamous scene from Chasing Amy. Do you know how we managed to get to I actually think that scene is a very important scene in, uh, how do you say it, LGBTQ film history. Because it, it's one of the first I can think of, it's one of the first to show that gay people can be just, a uh, lesbian, can be just as judgmental towards bisexuals as straight people are. Because let's be fair here, they are in no way, shape or form supportive of her. And everyone's got their own journey. Everyone's got, you know, who they are and who they represent. And it's unfair to just close down and put the barriers up and all that sort of thing because you're, you now don't represent what we do, what we represent. I think it's, it's a very telling scene, and I think it's also something which isn't shown enough. I think that it does need to be shown more, that that kind of thing does happen. Usually when 
LGBTQ plus people are discriminated against, it's always straight. I don't think it's genuine prejudice. I think it's ignorance. I think it's misunderstanding. With that kind of thing, when gay people have a go at bisexual people, there should be more understanding because gay people do have it hard. They do have people who genuinely have a go at them, who genuinely are against them. So when you do shut down, when you are dismissive of someone because they've now come out as bi instead of, instead of gay, you should be celebrating that and you should be acknowledging that and saying, that's fine, that's who you are, we accept that, just like we want to be accepted. That sort of thing should be embraced by everyone. No matter where you, don't matter where you stand, if you're an ally, if you're a gay guy, it doesn't matter. You should just accept everyone for who they are. With being a writer as well as a director, Henry is in fact incorporating more LGBT characters into his scripts, primarily bisexual people. So with this, I definitely needed to find out just what his process for this is and why he chose to do this in the first place. I wanted to write a bisexual character, but I didn't want that to be his character. I didn't want it to be, the only thing which is important about him is his sexuality. It's just who he is. It's just who any of us are. Same with any sexuality. I don't want to generalize is more, the, is more the thing about it. I don't want to stereotype. It's, as I said before, it's one aspect of who they are. Sometimes with the scripts that I write, sometimes with the material that I write, it's, it is important to the character and it's also important to the story. But I think the way that I go about learning about that sort of thing and understanding that sort of thing, my girlfriend's bisexual, and I think it's very simple, just talk to people. You don't learn about this sort of thing through Twitter. You learn about this sort of thing through people. Just talk to them, they're humans. And they'll tell you, trust me, they'll tell you when you're making a mistake. And they'll also tell you when you've done something right, when you've got something right. I make mistakes, of course I do, but I don't apologize for those mistakes. I acknowledge them, I move past it, and I make sure that what I write next is better. Representation is important, but don't panic to people, because then it's insulting. Then you alienate one side and you insult the other. You've won at nothing. So don't panic to people. That's how I look at it. I don't think non-bisexual people really can perceive bisexuals in media, because there aren't that many. It's not often you see someone with a man and a woman within the same show, or even a character saying that they're bisexual. In today's society, it's still very selective. Like, people are now open about being gay. I think the other sexual tendencies are not so often talked about. I only know from Alex what pansexual is. I didn't know it was a thing, but it is a thing. So it's just like some people are not aware of it. They don't know it exists. And on the topic of pansexuality, bisexuality and pansexuality are often mistaken as being one of the same kind of sexuality. But the literal dictionary definition of bisexuality is sexual or romantic attraction to two sexes or two genders whereas pansexuality is the attraction to a person of any sex or gender. And because of the fact that both sexualities are so close together in description, pansexual people face the same kind of discrimination and stigmas as bisexual people do. So to help round up everything that I've been looking at so far, I went to speak to somebody who is part of this bisexual umbrella, a dear close friend of mine who I've known for many years and was one of the first people I actually came out to. Hi, my name is James Bogle. I am and a flight attendant, and I'm a pansexual man. So I first realised that I wasn't straight, kind of around the age of like 13 or 14. I did develop a crush on someone at my school, and uh, it, was at, it was at a point in time where, you know, be cool gay was one of the biggest insults that you could get in that school. So I fully, <laughs> fully repressed it down. I definitely did still like girls. I knew I wasn't 100% gay, because uh, I knew I did still like girls, but I definitely had a crush on this guy. I started out thinking that I was bisexual, and when I kind of discovered what pansexuality was, I realised that was much closer to uh, how I'm attracted to people, and I think it's a better description of my own sexuality than bisexuality was. So when 
uh, I was talking to men on Grindr, I was told that I was a hate part of the game, and I've had pushbacks from straight girls as well who say they didn't want to uh, compete with gay men. So that's that's more where the pushback has been rather than the specific point of me coming out. Film and TV 100% has to take some of that responsibility because where there have been bisexual characters, they've been played off as a joke or they've been told that they're greedy or all, all, all of these other kind of things. And it's not even just that, it's also, you know, just not including bisexual characters at all. I think there is a lot on film and TV where characters are either just straight straight up gay, straight up straight. There, there, there is almost no room for bisexuality in, in pop culture. And I think that contributes to it. Because there are no bisexual characters, or very, very few bisexual characters in film and TV, people assume that they don't exist, that they're just confused. Honestly, there's not many characters that I can think of off the top of my head that I, that I would say are like 100% bi. I think there was, there, was one, there was one that does it really well, the show uh, Orphan Black does it really well with the character of Cassima because um, it is played entirely straight in, in, in a different sense. Um, but it's, it is played in a way it's not showing her as, as, as greedy or as or it's shown bisexuality as a joke, it's just, it's just a normal kind of part of her character. Whereas for a lot of other bisexual characters in film and TV, it is just, oh, this is, this, this is, this is a joke. This is just a joke because um, we can't have this character be gay, but we want to have this kind of, oh, oh, oh isn't, isn't that guy hot? Oh, oh, I guess I'm bi. And it, it just feels so, it feels so disingenuous because, like I said before, the B part of LGBT is there for a reason. My sexuality is not the most interesting thing about me. Now, I want, I want to see bisexual people represented as normal people. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't even necessarily have to be, I think, I think characters have a tendency to change once they're given uh, a sexuality and especially especially once they're given uh, bisexuality as almost a character trait it it almost seems to it almost seems to change the character i want to see bisexual people represented as what they are just people who are attracted to more than one gender that's all i think film and tv needs to do I just want actual bisexual representation. Just people who happen to be bisexual. I don't feel represented in TV and film as a bisexual woman, particularly a disabled bisexual woman. Disabled people are so often not represented romantically as it is. Then trying to represent someone as bisexual too is practically non-existent. I believe bisexuals are the largest group in the LGBTQ plus community and like we're so underrepresented. So I came out to my family when I was 23 and by that point I'd already been out to my close friends for like three years at that point. And in the six years of being out I have seen so much negativity towards bisexual people. We get cold, greedy, untrustworthy, and it's not just from straight people, it's from gays and lesbians as well, which is very, very frustrating and confusing because there's no clear evidence to suggest this. And I think in relation to film and TV, the reason why it's just so easy for them to brush aside different sexualities or any sexuality that isn't you know, gay or lesbian or transgender is because it's because those three are the ones that are more 
physically obvious to be able to tell. You can make a pretty clear assumption on whether someone is gay, a lesbian or transgender based on how they physically present themselves. But when it comes to being bisexual, pansexual, asexual, there is nothing that kind of screams out, hi, I'm bi. And there are a few different jokes that kind of go around saying that bisexual people love to wear flannel. And while that is true, when you portray that onto the screen, if it's a woman wearing flannel, then chances are they're going to be brushed off as being a lesbian. And if it's a guy wearing flannel, they're going to be brushed off as being straight. So there's no kind of common ground and it's easier just to kind of slot people into different categories than to just address the fact that bisexuality is a thing. And because the fact that the film and TV industry don't actually like even saying the word bisexual, it makes it seem like it's a dirty word. And so without all the negative examples of a bisexual person come into the characteristics of a character when they're being written for a TV show or film. And it doesn't even just stop there. The erasure doesn't stop just at bisexual people. How many asexual people have you seen in a film or in a TV show? There's not very many. If there's no physically obvious trait that a person has to show that they are a certain sexuality that isn't gay or lesbian or transgender, then they're just forgotten about. And it's only when they actually include it into the dialogue of the script that they make it apparent what their actual sexuality is. But by that point, it's made to be a bigger deal than what it actually is. And it shouldn't have to be that way. It just shouldn't. 